All right, now we're recording. Excellent. So, yay! Um, I'm Erin Sandler Rathy, and I'm here with. I'm gonna. I'm gonna have you say your name because no one's actually said your last name out loud to me, and I want to make sure that I'm. I'm pronouncing it right, so I'll make you do it, Carol. Exactly, and it's Carol, and it's Delugi. So Delugi. It's okay. Hard G, and there's no E in between. It's a D L U G Y, and that's that's a it's a challenge. Always has been. <laughs> the past 26 years. <laughs> well, congratulations. Um, so from Get In Shape for Women in Lexington, you are a business owner. How long have you had the franchise? So the franchise has been around, it's going on 14 years. And I was the first client in Lexington ah. when they opened the doors, grand opening. Um, and uh, I was a client. Well, you can say I've been a client almost forever, but uh, I left my the job I had because I wanted to be a personal trainer mm -hmm. and so I worked there and managed there for six years and then I okay. bought it four years ago oh. and um, so I've been going into the parking lot for at least 14 years yeah <laughs> well excellent all right there's loyalty for you right mm -hmm. um, so f the first question I was gonna ask is how have you been personally just how are you handling all of this well there's a lot of you know I think part of it is being busy with the uh, the chamber, um, as you know, I started out <laughs> without you, so it was <laughs> during the COVID thing. I was uh, there was just a lot to do, so yeah. that kept me very busy. And I think being busy is one of the best um, best things you can do because you, you, it's too easy to sit on the couch. And so the the chamber it kept me very busy. And then trying to find a way to I closed my business before I was it, it was we were made to close it. I mm -hmm. just felt it was. Uh, time and, and so when I closed my doors we immediately tried to find a thing well how do we keep our community together okay and I, I you know heard about this thing called zoom and uh, decided that we would try it and we have we immediately put it in about 20 20 workouts a week oh. um, I was quoted in another venue as only four or five a week and I said no that's not right it's four or five a day we have about 20 a week including stretching um, and then we, you know, we kind of look at the, the people that have, are in the class and we might do more balance, we might do, do more hip work, things like that. Okay. Um, so we're trying to appeal to all of our members. So it's and, still tailored. Uh, what's that? It's, it's still tailored to the members who are present. And this is what's nice about Zoom. It, it started out quite a few people wouldn't put their pictures up. <laughs> so it's right. hard to be interactive. But as, as time gets, people get more comfortable and, you know, they maybe spruced up a little place so they'd have a nice area to be on, on camera. And then we can see them. And so we can see, you know, Aaron, you're supposed to be lifting your, the weights above your shoulders, not below your shoulders, things like that. So it's been mm -hmm. really great to be interactive that way. Um, and so we started right out and my trainers just took to it naturally. Uh, you know, there's always a few bugs here and there that, you know, you, you're frozen like this. Right. <laughs> and we tell people that we didn't stop exercising. You keep moving. <laughs> and, um, and then we can do everything. We can do nutrition on online. They can ask us questions. Yeah. You know, Carol, am I having a hard time? I'm, uh, you know, I can't find anything. Take out. I don't want to do takeout. Yeah. You have some recipes. What can I do to eat better and, and things like that? And right. um, so that just, it kept me busy and it's still keeping me busy. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the best thing is find things to do. Has it, has it been a revenue stream for you? It has not. Okay. <laughs> so, um, when I closed the doors, I suspended all the memberships of all my clients. Mm -hmm. um, the, the model we have is you come in and you work with a personal trainer in the room with you. And it doesn't feel the same. And so I didn't feel it was something that I was gonna you know, charge people while they weren't coming into the studio. So the, all these sessions have been complimentary. And oh. um, it's, it's most important thing to me is to keep my community together. And to see everybody's faces, and, and, and that's one of the big, biggest attractions of you know, working out in a smaller group so, like we do. You get to know everybody. They know the trainers. They get a familiar face you know, on, on the Zoom every, every time they come on. And, mm -hmm. and that's made a huge difference. I think you, it, these types of situations can be very isolating. And I think that, and, and that leads to you know, a lot of depression and, and you know, some really negative feelings. So getting on the uh, Zoom with us, it, it does more than just, it's more than just exercise. Do you think, are you hearing from your clients that they're 
eager to get back into the studio? So yes, everybody's eager to get back into the studio, but eager doesn't mean they're going to come back immediately. Okay. Because people have different levels, right? They have different, you know, I have, oh, clients who have uh, 80 year old parents living with them. Mm -hmm. They're very, very cautious about going out. Right. Um, and, and, and things like that. So there's people that just aren't, I always say hypothetically, if we were going to open up on June 15th, which is maybe, um, we have to wait for the governor's declaration, but say we were, um, it, it's, it's, I've been looking at it. It's a kind of a 50, 50, you know, 50%. I'm coming in. I don't care. Just <laughs> let, get me out of my house. I want to work out. And then the rest are, are, it's, they're as anxious to come back but that doesn't mean they're going to come back immediately. Most of them feel that they might need another month or so. And so we're gonna to continue to offer people staying at home the um, videos. Okay. Do you think the videos could be turned into a revenue stream? Have you thought about that? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. And, and I think that's what's important is you start looking at things that, a little bit differently and you say, geez, I, I'm delighted to see how many come on daily uh, to do our videos. And, um, and then I was thinking, I said, you know, a lot of people, in my studio, they go to the Cape for the, for the summer mm -hmm. or they go to Florida for the winter. And mm -hmm. they said, geez, what do you, and they always ask, is there a get in shape for women in Florida or is there a get in shape for women on it? Now they can take us with them. Yeah. And, and I think that now when they go on vacation, they can, they can do their workouts and, and we'll just zoom them into the, the workouts in the studio. Okay. And, and, and then I have uh, a couple of people that said, no, can my sister do these? She's in Michigan. Mm -hmm. And so I said, you know what? Maybe we, we have some virtual we have people in uh, Michigan that want to do the workouts with their sister. Well, there's yeah. an opportunity to do. Like an online only workout. membership or something. Correct. Correct. Or some kind of hybrid. Because mm -hmm. yeah. I got to tell you, my kids are enrolled in karate and it's, it's you know, a, a quite similar. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. challenges right and they've been doing they've done their zoom karate all the way through and the studio I, I love the studio this is I'm not not a slam against them at all but you know we're paying the same tuition that we were paying and uh you know they're but they're getting the same experience or not the same experience but they're getting what they need they're both working right. toward a black belt this year and they're they feel prepared as if they were mm -hmm. working in the studio. Right. Um, right. And we just have to think about, you know, right now we have to remember that people are, they don't have a, a TRX or a, a you know, some, some yeah. machines in their basement. Right. right. I do, but uh, most people don't. And so when we're doing our home version of these things, we're, we're telling people, you know what, go get uh, a bottle of bleach. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's your, that's your weight. That's go your get kettlebell two, for today. <laughs> exactly. That's your kettlebell for today. Go get a bottle of wine, two bottles of wine. They're each two and a half pounds a piece. So, you know, we're saying, well, what can you use in your own home? Right. And, um, but if you, if you want to do more, you know, into the future, uh, somebody's going to the Cape, I would tell them, you know, you, you should have a set of maybe some five pound weights, uh, a dumbbell, you know, a kettlebell and stuff like that. So you can have a, do a little bit more closely aligned to what you see in the studio. Right. Right. Yeah, but you'd have that luxury of preparing. A lot of people this time found that they couldn't find any weights because yes. everybody bought out every weight yes. that you could find. And uh, so the, the difference would be, you know, if you're prepared for something like this and then you virtual can take on a new meaning. True. No, absolutely. That's true. Yeah. Are people revealing their faces now? Almost or everybody their, their does. Their bodies, more importantly. Almost everybody does. Yep. And, you know, it's, it's, uh, we, we're getting rid of those virtual backgrounds. Yeah. You know, somebody's exercising in front of the Golden Gate Bridge. And, <laughs> and so they're, they're becoming more comfortable. And I think that's just a, a matter of time. They're getting more comfortable and they, they're looking and it's, it's, it's funny. I hear some people say, well, I don't want you to see me exercise. And I said, I see you exercise every day. <laughs> And uh, so we're actually you know, quite a bit closer. <laughs> even closer. It's in person. Here you can hide, you know. Yeah. Um, but so we, it's it's all a matter of humor, and we bring humor to the to the workouts and to get to once again share. People at the beginning, we give them a chance. We unmute everybody so they can chit chat. You sure. know, and they look and they'll see who's on. Oh, Margaret, I haven't seen you in forever. And the mm -hmm. Margaret, what do you teach? And where what have you done? Done? And Joan, how are you? And has anybody seen Crystal? And right. so you, you get people asking and 
and and and it's and it's just so nice when somebody says they're glad to see you and yeah. uh so that's that's it's this best part and then you know five minutes of chatter and then we start working out and once again they can throw nutrition questions at us and um you know we can unmute it really once again you you get used to it right we started out everybody's asking the question at the same time mm -hmm. right and so they're talking over and okay everybody we're gonna then we mute everybody unmute and it's become it's 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 so much better now <laughs> so it's a oh we've all learning. become zoom experts at this point right exactly. um, yeah. yeah but now there's all different kinds of um uh platforms that's true to look at now i say well one day when i have plenty of time or i'll ask somebody else you know Erin, <laughs> which one should I be using? Right. You have better knowledge than I do. Um, I'm not sure which one I'll end up using. Right. Um, but Zoom has a, it's it's ahead of the game because it's first of all it's trial by fire. These people I think just learned um, because they had to, but it's also a, a reasonable expense. I think you know that's another thing that's going to be important is how much you know they people are trying to get it competing for business now, but later who knows if zoom is going to have i'm sure people are going to cut back on zoom um yes well and as, as you said especially with new competitors in the market and mm -hmm. new yeah. options so they i hope are making hay while the sun shines right well that okay so expenses was something i was going to ask you about because mm -hmm. that's one of the struggles that <clears throat> excuse me a lot of business owners are facing is they've mm -hmm. still got expenses but they've got no revenue coming in so how is that working for you what's well, tough i mean we we got the um you know you, you have um the payroll protection stuff out there you've got there's a lot of resources and um i'm fortunate without going into detail to have people that are willing to work with me mm -hmm. on on expenses and things like that uh, uh my several some of my as you can imagine uh businesses have different kinds of insurance requests and, and things and if you ask and the thing is to not to be afraid to ask, you know, I did ask my insurance agent, I said, could you see uh, it, my business is closed. So I couldn't possibly use uh, this particular type of insurance. And I, I got 25%. Oh, good. As a, as a credit. Okay. And, and so I think it's, it's asking these questions. You don't assume I, I called Comcast. Now in my studio, I have four televisions. Mm -hmm. And four, so that's four cable streams, four cable boxes, high internet, right? Because, uh, and uh, two telephone lines and compute the whole thing. And so I was able to bring my uh, bill, my monthly bill from about say $340 down to one, down to a hundred. Oh my gosh. So, because I don't need all that stuff. Right. You know, I wanted one TV in case just, you know, the kicks but i shut down three cable boxes because they and i asked them i said what can i do mm -hmm. well you don't want to shut off cable because when you want to bring it back it's going to be a fee he, they said but shut down the other three and there won't be a fee okay. and they're willing to work with you they'd rather get you know 99 dollars a month than nothing right and and so that was really helpful and i think it's it's a matter of you know having discussions like this so people can say oh my god i i didn't even think about cutting back on my internet in my facility. Yes. And, and you can, and, and they are totally willing to work with you. I, I, there was no resistance whatsoever. I forwarded both the telephone lines. I said, let's shut off one telephone line and I'll forward the other one. Mm -hmm. And that saved me $30 a month. So you, you, it all adds up, but you have right. to speak up and you have to look for these things. Yeah. And that's what I think is important and ask, ask about negotiating things and what can I do? And so it, like I say, I, I, I don't, don't have an income stream, but I minimized all of my bills. And um, so hard. Yeah, absolutely. I, the, from what I have seen, and granted, I've, I've been in this job now for like five weeks, but what I have seen talking to members seems to be that the, the businesses who are faring best are businesses doing exactly what you've said, taking care of customers and making mm -hmm. them feel that you're still there for them and you still want to deliver service to them and being very active, not, mm -hmm. as you said, not waiting for things to shake out or waiting to see what comes, but I mean, we all have to do that, but mm -hmm. taking an active role in minimizing expenses, seeing what programs are available, coming up with new ways of interacting with their clients and, and so forth. 
It, exactly. I mean, there was one time I, I, I think it was about a week in and I said, wait a minute, I got to shut off the heat. <laughs> I have to, you know, I, I, I was thinking and I said, wait a minute. I, I, so I have a, a nest. So I was, I'm able to control it on my phone. Yeah. And I said, oh, I have to make sure my heat doesn't come on in the day because it, it cycles, right? Sure. It's, it, it's warm by 6 a.m. and then it shuts off. And I said, so there's certain things that you, you really have to think about. And, uh, and uh, it just is, a, it's, it's a total learning experience. We all, we all know now. But um, I think, once again, it makes us think about going forward, how to minimize expenses. Yes. And I said, well, some of these was, things. That was something I was going to ask, going forward. How are you approaching going forward, reopening? Well, so we're being cautious. And, um, you know, the, it, it's kind of up in the air. Our gyms are right this moment in phase three. Right. When is phase three? I, who knows? It's a minimum of three weeks after phase two, right. whatever that is, right? So we don't know. But I, we're being cautious anyway. It, it's, it's not too early to start saying, well, no matter what, we're going to be wearing these. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we, we have to start building a list of protocols. I have um, a supply of 80% hand sanitizer, 80% alcohol, which does a number on your hands, but you know, it's um, what, what we have to have. Uh, I happen, I'm fortunate, I have three doors in my studio. So one will be in and one will be out. Okay. And so we're saying, okay, how does, how does that work? And instead of an hour workout, we're doing 45 minutes on strength training mm -hmm. so that we have 15 minutes to prepare for the next group. Okay. And how do you do cardio? I think cardio is very difficult in a mask. And so maybe we, I don't think we will be doing cardio. Mm -hmm. um, and there's no fans. So that you really, you can't use fans because it, it just blows the air into the person behind you. Yeah. And then you start thinking about it. We have an Aerodyne bike, which is just a giant fan. Right. <laughs> so I said, oh my God, we can't use that either. And so you start moving down this path and then you walk in the door. How do people, well, I keep the doors open okay. as long as I can. So nobody has to tell you. So you're trying to eliminate as many high touch surfaces as you can. Yes. Even though the CDC has been coming out with that is a less likely manner to catch it it's making people feel comfortable absolutely i say you can't really tell people no you can you can touch that it doesn't matter but people don't want to touch it so you take it out of circulation so i have the doors are going to be all open and so nobody has to touch that mm -hmm. you know we, we so it's, you really start thinking how do we keep people six feet apart easy i have a big studio it's fine i have plenty of space but we might even put tape on the floor and say here's your square Right. And here's your square and here's your square and your square. And it's just to make people, people feel comfortable. And, um, you know, we were giving out free pro protein powder and I have to suspend that for now because you can't have people putting their hand into a protein bag. So that you, you just really start looking at your place of business and saying, well, what, what makes sense and what doesn't make sense? I take, I'm taking the chairs out mm -hmm. because I can't encourage people to sit and uh, linger. Right. Um, I think I'll put them outside on the, the front walkway, maybe, and let people sit six feet apart outside. But, you know, and, and, and the more we take out of the studio, the less we have to clean as well. True. Once again, my trainers are going to be responsible for sanitizing in between classes. Mm -hmm. And the, you, you, you'll be able to do that best if you have less stuff to do. Mm -hmm. So, um, but we, we are fully... Think through the entire chain of interaction of someone walking into your studio and every minute that they're there, what will they be doing and what then needs to be altered? So one of the biggest things is, is, is once again, we want people to feel what the biggest thing is, is once again, my, my goal is to make it seamless mm -hmm. so that it, 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 you look at things and you say, Oh my God, it is so clean in here. There are so few. So you need to be able to see a change, right? but it needs to feel like the same old place. Do you know what I mean? It needs to feel, so the thing that they're gonna hear is, you know, hi, Aaron. <laughs> they, it's gonna be like this, hi, Aaron. Right. Uh, and, um, but it's, 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 once again, it's the interaction. It's, it's the welcome back, it's so good to see you, and here, pick a square, we're gonna do this, and, and we've got it down to that you, if you really want to, you can do your whole workout, and the only thing that touches something in my studio is your feet on the floor. Wow. Yeah. And, you know, and we can give you a, a fantastic workout. And, and once again, because you're getting the workout, but you're also getting that human contact that we've been missing. 
Yeah. And yeah, yeah. So, so it, the actual really, physical contact, just that's right. No physical contact, <laughs> but you know, the trainers are very skilled too. And, and saying, you know what, your knees aren't in the right place and look, do what I'm doing. And right. so we're going to, we're going to be their mirror. Yeah. And so we don't have to touch anybody. Right. And uh, so it's, it's, it's surprising. And then, like I say, the more you listen to people, you pick up all these nuggets. Uh, you're not supposed to have a shared water cooler. Okay. Um, so you're supposed to, uh, we're supposed to shut down our water coolers because people take a drink mm -hmm. and then they put their bottle up against and press the, right, the spigot thing. Mm -hmm. So, we, so we're being careful telling everybody, bring your own water and we'll have a supply of, you know, small water, you know, disposable, but I, you know, we don't like to do that either because right. plastic, you know, <laughs> but, but it, well, it's trade-offs. I mean, we, mm -hmm. we're all having to adjust in different ways to those kinds of trade-offs. You, you can't yep. bring your own bag to the grocery store anymore, right? right. Yep. And we had worked really hard to get people into that mode. And now we have to say, actually, stop doing that. And we're going to go back to the paper bags. Exactly. Who, who knew? That was expected. So now put your mask with your water bottle, fill it up, <laughs> come on in. Um, but, you know, once again, who doesn't have a mask and who doesn't have a water bottle? Right. Uh, I think these are things that it's just going to have. It's going to be habit. And, and I, I think it's going to be habit for a while. How are you communicating that to your clients? Well, I'm in touch with them a couple times a week. Okay. And so what I did is, and I want everybody's input as well, because I, we're not experts yet. I mean, we will be, but you know, you, I want them to feel comfortable. So I sent out a list, believe it or not, of 15 protocols okay. that, they, you know, starting with if you're sick, stay home. Of course. Bring your own water bottle. You know, things, things like that, that you think are obvious, but I don't want any... No, nope, if you're sick, you stay home. But 15, and I sent it to them uh, a few days ago and asked, am I missing anything? Because I want them to be part of this. So they can say, you know what? No, I, Carol asked, and there, I couldn't think of anything else. And, and so, you know, if somebody does, absolutely, we're going to add it to the, to the, because I want everybody to feel comfortable. And everybody has different you know, and some people say, I can't even tell you how great that list is, but I still, <laughs> I'm still can't, I just can't get out of my house yet. Yeah. And because they have a husband who's really susceptible, things like that. Right. Um, and, and that completely understand, completely understand. The last thing I want to do is make, have somebody come in and they're not comfortable. Have you encountered any resistance? Um, in terms of? In terms of compliance, in terms of anybody saying this is ridiculous or? No. Not at all. Not at all. Um, I'm not going to say that in, uh, in a couple of my sister studios, um, uh, you know, a few people said, I, I won't wear a mask, mm. period. And well, then you have a conversation that I'm sorry, but it's not only the right thing to do, but it is a mandate and, and, and you, you'll have to sp suspend your membership longer or, or agree to wear one. And so there's just certain things that, you know, so far so good. I haven't had any resistance at all. Good. So we're, we're keeping a good thought there. Good. And are you concerned at all about liability? Because that's something else I'm hearing from members and, and from other mm -hmm. chambers of commerce too, that the businesses are worried that they're going to get sued. Well, so we had um, a little plug for you, Erin, and uh, some of our <laughs> chamber members. <laughs> we had a, 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 gr a group of attorneys on uh, where we could ask these questions. And that was something that came up in that. And one of the little nuggets that I took away from there was very specific. That is, as long as, and this is something we've, we've known for a long time, OSHA is the standard, right? If you play by OSHA rules, you are very, your liability is very limited. And so OSHA, it's, it's long and you should uh, get somebody to interpret it maybe for you, but OSHA has a very specific list of COVID-19 rules right. and guidelines and things like that. And once again, it's 38 pages. It can bo be boiled down to a lot, but it's nothing unusual. It's nothing outrageous that you have to do. But as long as you follow that, those OSHA guidelines, and, and I'm, I'm thinking that what the Baker administration puts out as guidelines is going to mirror that fairly, fairly closely. I can't imagine being that different. But you've got the guidelines out there. You look at the guidelines, you abide by them. And I think you, as far as, like I say, you had what four or so attorneys on and they were all in agreement. Yes. That it took away a lot of, so I think when you hear those things, it, it takes away some of that fear. Yes.
And I, I remember one of the things the attorney said as well was training. It, mm -hmm. it, you train your employees what the standard is and they also have to enforce it. And it's, you know, from having been in HR and I've worked in mm -hmm. HR as well. And it's, it isn't any different than teaching your employees about handling hazardous waste or what happens if there's some kind of, um, somebody, you know, cuts a finger in the workplace or whatever. Mm -hmm. There are always protocols that you're supposed to follow and, or, or even safe lifting of heavy boxes and things like that. You train. Absolutely. Absolutely. You we all have that, you know, we all have um, uh, defibrillators in our studios. Yeah. Right. And so you look at that and you say, oh my God, but now nobody thinks anything of it. And then, then uh, we're all CPR trained. And now this is just one more level. And, and it's just a matter of fact. And, and once these things are put out there and people have the right tools, Yes. It, it all works. It'll be fine. Well, I'm very glad to hear that you're so hopeful. I remember at the very beginning of all of this, I was talking to a friend of mine and she said, how are you doing? I said, oh, I'm fine. We're fine. My family's fine. Mm -hmm. And she said, oh, it's such a relief to hear somebody say they're fine. It, <laughs> it, you know, especially at the, at the beginning, everyone was very bewildered and not sure what was going to be coming and mm -hmm. I'm very glad to hear that you're, you're hopeful. You, you're taking oh, this as an opportunity, I think. It's an opportunity. Is it something that we, I wish we didn't have to do? Of course, of course. But you know, it, it, you, I think you have to look at a, a big picture, you yeah. know, and a big picture and say, it happened. Now what am I gonna do? And right. I, I think, you know, there's a certain energy that you, you have to drum up and, and say, well, what, 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 what am I going to do? Do I have a good community to go back to? I do. I have a strong community of, um, in my business area, a strong community in the, in the larger Lexington area. And, you know, it, it's, I think sometimes you just have to be hopeful because the other side doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't work. Yeah. You know? And, uh, well, and I think, I think too, from having been in business myself as a business owner, you can, you can be surprised at the ripple effect that you have. Mm -hmm. You don't, you, you don't always stop and think about the impact you're having on all of these people, but just your studio interacting with your clients, they're, they're very loyal and you've mm -hmm. been communicating with them. And so that whole attitude is, is radiating out um, from you to them and hopefully through them to other people. No. And, and, and that's a, the thing is, is I, you know, I say about keeping my community together, but they're, they are my family. Right. And I, they give as much to me as I, you know, I hope I give to them. And uh, I, I can't wait to see them again and, and be back amongst my, my members and my family and call them my fitness family. But it, it they do so much for me. Uh, it's, I always say I have the best job in the world. Well, that's excellent. I, I'm going to end on that note. I love that. <laughs> um, well, thank you, Carol, for taking the time to talk with me, especially to kick, to kick this off. Um, because My as pleasure. you know, Happy to be doing daily. this daily this week. Um, and you were instrumental in helping me line up Joel Berman for tomorrow to talk about um, Berman's fine wines and spirits. So um, yeah. you can tune in and see that tomorrow. Oh, I'll be um, here. But Thank you very much. And I will post this post haste. Excellent. Thank you, Erin. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day. You as well. Thank you.